Hi, my name is Olivia and I'm excited to take you along on my journey to Transylvania, Romania. In my upcoming videos, I will explore the town of Sighishwara, a UNESCO World Heritage Site known as the only inhabited medieval citadel in southeastern Europe. Then I will embark on a 30km walk on Via Transilvanica, a 1400km trail that crosses the entire country and serves as Romania's version of the Camino. It's just absolutely amazing! If you're looking for a trail that's not popular, if you're looking for untouched nature, you might want to give Via Transylvanica a chance. Good morning, I'm currently in the beautiful Transylvania. Spring is finally here, I'm finally traveling again and I'm really excited to show you a little bit of my home country. I just arrived here yesterday and today I'm gonna have a slow day, walk around Zigishara, which is the only inhabited medieval citadel in southeastern Europe. I got a 20-30 minute walk to get into the old town and then I'll walk around the town, enjoy the beautiful views, try some of the local food and relax. So yeah, let's go! As I stepped into Sikishwara's old center, I was warmly welcomed by the charming atmosphere, inviting restaurants and quaint coffee shops. I missed being in the sun so much. Lemonade, and now let's go exploring. The citadel of Sigishwara dates back to the 12th century, when it was established by Transylvanian Saxons, a Germanic ethnic group invited to settle in the region by Hungarian kings. Its strategic location, atop a hill, provided protection from invaders and it grew into a significant medieval trading hub. The citadel is surrounded by fortified walls that are nearly 1 km in length and include 14 towers. These defensive structures were built and expanded over several centuries to withstand attacks and protect the inhabitants. This is such a nice place. Look at the view. And here is the clock tower. There are many towers you can visit in the city, but this is the most popular one. The clock tower is one of the most iconic landmarks of the town and serves as both a symbol of its medieval heritage and a focal point for visitors. It was constructed in the 14th century as part of the fortifications surrounding the citadel of Sigishara and it was originally built as a defensive structure serving to guard the main entrance to the citadel. The tower is an impressive example of medieval architecture, featuring a combination of Gothic and Renaissance elements. Today, the clock tower serves as a museum, dedicated to the history and culture of Sigishara, and visitors can explore several levels of the tower, each containing exhibits related to different aspects of the town's heritage. I just stopped this beautiful viewpoint. Honestly, today I just feel like sitting in the sun and 
enjoying the fact that it's spring. There's such a peaceful atmosphere. These are amazing. I just visited the clock tower and I'm gonna head towards the covered stairs, I think it would translate in English. So there's a school there on the top of a hill and uh, they built these wooden covered stairs for children to be able to get to school when the weather was not great and uh, now it's, uh, it's a tourist attraction as well. There aren't that many individual things to visit in the town but it's more about just being in the citadel, admiring all the houses, enjoying the views, having a coffee, sitting in the sun and all the nice things like that. I continued my walk towards the Sigishwara Town Hall, which is situated within the medieval citadel, overlooking the town and surrounding countryside. And here you can enjoy these amazing views of the whole town. The town hall is a grand building with a baroque style facade which stands out among the medieval buildings in the town centre due to its size and grandeur. Its position offers stunning views of the picturesque landscape. really happy I happened to visit on a Tuesday because it's so nice and quiet and the weather is perfect. Within the citadel you'll find a mix of Gothic, Renaissance and Baroque architectural styles. Many of the buildings within Sugishara citadel date back to the medieval period with some constructed as early as the 16th and 17th centuries. These houses typically feature traditional Transylvanian architecture, characterized by steep roofs, wooden shutters and colorful facades. The houses are often painted in soft pastel hues, creating a visually striking and picturesque scene. These vibrant colors contrast beautifully with the surrounding cobblestone streets and medieval structures. The buildings are characterized by their sturdy construction, colorful facades and ornate details. Today, many of the houses have been restored and now serve as museums, shops, restaurants and guest houses. The old town would be so much nicer if there weren't that many cars around, but uh, there are many private houses here and businesses, so I understand that they're convenient. And here are famous covered stairs. Imagine having to go up these stairs every day to go to school. Dating back to the 17th century, these stone steps provide both functional access and a charming glimpse into the town's architectural heritage. So here are the stairs and this is the school. They must have some very fit students. And here's the view from high up. So beautiful. I haven't talked about this in my Kino de Santiago series, but since I'm here relaxing on a bench, maybe it's time to share a little bit more about my life. Before the Camino, I lived in London for around four years. And the main reason I did a Camino is because I decided to quit my life there and make a big change. I was a classical musician my whole life. Uh, I studied uh, vocal performance, but then I really wanted to live abroad. I really wanted to travel. So I thought maybe I should move to the big city. Let's give it a go. Let's see what it would be like. And that forced me to, to do more than singing because Vocal performance was not sustainable in a city like London. It was not giving me financial stability. And I ended up working in management when I'm a creative person and that's really not for me. And then work 
kind of took priority because that was paying the bills. So I started singing less and working more. On top of that, I started a master's degree in, in music management. And long story short, I reached a very unhappy point. I did not want to continue like that. I became very anxious, which after quitting my life in London and going back home, I stopped. So that was definitely the reason. And I decided to quit my life there, move back home, go on the Camino de Santiago and find happiness again. And I really did. I'm feeling so much better now. I was seeking freedom and I wanted to, to create and to live and to share my world with people. And Camino de Santiago marked my transition from, from my old life there to, to a new beginning. And I somehow ended up creating videos, which is something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. It's really not easy to start. I discovered Travel YouTube in 2020. I had more time on my hands and I was watching a lot of YouTube. And uh, I, I discovered that people travel full time and they create videos. And when I saw that, I thought, this is what I want to do. I did not even know that was a thing. It, it would be such a, such a passion project. Oh I love discovering the world and I would love to share that with everyone. And I think it took me three years to even admit to someone that I would like to make videos on YouTube. That's how difficult it seemed. It seemed like such a dream rather than a possibility that I didn't have the courage to admit it to someone. <laughs> So I never picked up the camera, I, I never made it happen. But the Camino represented change for me. The transition from, from my old life to the new beginning to, you know, having the courage to take a leap of faith, to go after my dreams. And I decided it's, it's, it's now, it has to be now. I have to pick up a camera. And I did it, and I'm so happy I did. And now I regret not doing it sooner. And I found so much joy in the entire process. Changed my lifestyle. I wanted to have more courage. I wanted to be more adventurous. I, I realized that the one thing that's worse than failure is never trying. So I tried and it made me, brought me so much joy. And I guess I'm saying all of this to encourage other people to do the same because you're not gonna regret it you're you're only gonna regret not trying I know there are many people in the same situation and I know how difficult it is to start something new or to change or to just follow your dreams I'm also aware of privilege and the fact that not everyone can just jump but I think in many situations courage is, is really important as well and there are ways around it if you believe that you can so that's why I'm talking about this So here I am going after all my plans, just not missing out on anything because I think that's, that's happiness. Happiness is having the courage to try, being a learner and getting your confidence from just being open and willing to learn rather than confirmation and validation and all of those things you get from, from the outside. My main lesson I learned on the Camino was that it's really worth enjoying every single day, not missing out on the journey. And if you, if you have a plan, if you have an idea, it's worth going for it because it's, it's not failure that's your enemy. And knowing that, just, just decided to be the, the person who tries and the person who learns and the person who develops. I think that's the other side of fear. On a less deeper note, I think it's time for my second coffee. Next to the clock tower, you will find Casa Breslelor, 
or the Guild House, which hosts an exhibition of tools, equipment and machinery used over a hundred years ago by Saxon craftsmen from Sikishwara and the surrounding areas. The word Bresla originates from a Slavic term and roughly translates to fraternity. These guilds, or Bresle, were medieval organizations that provided mutual aid and support to craftsmen of the same trade. The Saxon craftsmen in southern Transylvania were highly esteemed during the medieval period, known for their craftsmanship in precious metals and religious artifacts. These guilds were not only economic organizations, but also played roles in community welfare, church construction and defense. Each guild had its own responsibilities, including caring for orphans, widows, the poor and the elderly. They often owned and maintained specific towers as part of the town's defense system. The medieval guild system began to decline in the 18th century with the rise of manufacturing and it ceased to exist by the end of the 19th century. This was such a lovely museum. I don't know how to translate it exactly, but it was like a workshop museum and they brought the original workshop tools and everything from different areas in Transylvania. That was so nice to look at. And now I'm going to the map museum, which should be interesting as well. I think it's a maps and weapons museum, something like that. Now I got all this place myself. <laughs> Earlier it was very busy when I was trying to film. <laughs> it got so quiet now. I think uh, many tourists just came for a day trip and uh, they probably already left. I love souvenir shops. <sighs> it's just my all-time guilty pleasure. I would just buy all the souvenirs everywhere. I just visited the Maps and Weapons Museum as well. But I think I'm missing the historical information required to actually understand the maps. <laughs> now it's time for an early dinner. So I'd like to try a new place where I haven't been before. So, let's see. Okay, I decided to try the Vladim Paylor House restaurant. So I still ended up sitting outside, but I got two blankets, so I'm happy. Ordered my early dinner. And I also got a glass of wine. Expectations are low because it's a tiny bottle, but hopefully it's gonna warm me up. Oh, it's actually not bad. I'm loving this day. And I also went for the traditional Dracula stew, since this is Dracula's house. There's nothing like talking to a camera when eating alone in a restaurant. So, here we go. The stew tasting. Mmm, this is really good. I wish I was better at explaining food. Um, but yeah, it's a stew with, with I think it's pork and it's really tasty and the polenta is really good mm. and it's got mushroom as well I haven't had this food before I'd say it's a stew made traditionally I think I really need to improve my food description skills because my next trip is to Italy and um, food is important there this was yet another one of those days where I woke up feeling so tired and I thought maybe I should take this day off and just rest for longer then I decided to go out anyway and I'm so happy I did. This is so nice. And I'm going back to my cabin where it's freezing cold. I'm 
back at my cabin. This is my family cabin house in Transylvania. We don't actually live here. This is more like a countryside retreat. And this place needs a lot of work, a lot of renovations. And hopefully I'll, I'll get to do that at some point. I would love to make videos with it as well. But um, yeah, I haven't showed you around because I feel like it's a, it's a bit of a mess. I think it would be nice to make a um, relaxing renovation countryside videos. It's nice to come here in nature and enjoy the countryside. Today was a lovely day. Tomorrow I'm going to visit a really nice village, which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And then I'll start walking again. I will walk on a small stretch of Via Transylvanica, which is Romania's version of the Camino. Um, it was finished in 2020 and it's a 1400 kilometer trail and its purpose is community. It's still a bit out of season, so I'm not expecting to meet too many people, especially since it was pretty difficult to book this because many accommodations are not open yet. But I did find a stretch where I can actually walk. I booked it, it's, it's all good. So. That's gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more in that video, and um, yeah, now I'm gonna have a relaxing night and go to sleep because tomorrow is another day of exploring. So I'll see you in the next one.